Good, good, good morning, everybody. Just um, uh, be, be being invited to conference when the, the topic is, a fu is the future of music it is quite interesting. Um, five, Believe Digital was created 10 years ago in 2005. If the conference had been held at the time, the title of the topic probably would have been, is there a future for the music industry? Um, so thinking about today, the question is what the future of that music industry says a lot about where we've come from. Um, when uh, Believe Digital was created in 2005, basically digital music revenues in the world accounted for roughly a couple of percent of overall digital music revenues. Um, the products at the time that we were distributing on mobile were essentially ringtones, ring backtones. N 10 years ago. Uh, so we tend to forget quickly, why did we distribute ringtones, ring backtones at the time? Not out of choice, but in most European cities, mobile networks coverage was 2.5G, 3G. iPhones did not exist. So uh, basically, ringtones were the products that we could distribute it would have taken, it took at the time five to eight minutes to download a heavily encoded MP3 file on a cell phone. Uh, and today, we heard it from the previous panel, we're all talking about access, uh, networks, uh, streaming. And what we see today is definitely a world that where technology, the single one driver of change in the past 10 years has been technology. It's been networks and devices. And streaming is possible today only because you have 4G networks um, and devices where you can store the music, listen to the music pretty much anytime, anywhere, which was the, pr the promise of the early 2000s. What does that mean um, for the future of music for the next five, uh, the next 10 years? And I'm going to focus. Uh, a lot on, on artists and labels. The future where we are, what we have begun in the past year and a half is we have entered into a world of streaming. Um, and that's going to have for artists, labels, and for the music industry, four impacts. It's going to have an impact on creativity. Uh, it is going to change the nature of how we develop artists through uh, data analysis and CRM management. It's going to impact on how we develop artists internationally, and it's going to have in, an impact on the relationship between record labels and artists that is going to switch from a service model, from a copyright-based model, where the record labels own the copyright to a service model. First, it's going, to have, uh, it's going to have a strong impact on creativity. Why do I mean by this? In a world of streaming, you're going to see the music market grow significantly in the next five years. We see it with streaming already. Why? The average spend of a music user in the download world on iTunes was essentially $45 per year. Now you're switching to a model where Average subscribers spends $120 per year. So you're going to see a pie grow very significantly as streaming adoption accelerates. Two, uh, let's not forget uh, that 70 to 75 of a value that is being created by services like Spotify or Deezer is, banked, is paid to um, content to content owners, either publishers, record labels, three quarters of the value that is being created goes back to the creative ecosystem, which means that we're going to see when money goes back into the creative ecosystem, it means more money to invest in content production, more money to invest into uh, music video creation, um, 
and uh, in the creative ecosystem. So I think you're going to see much more, uh, well, the past 10 years has really been focused on how do we get users to adopt music services. The next 10 years are going to be much more focused on, on creation. But the second impact of the switch to the streaming world is really going to be about how we tell the stories, how we market, and how we promote music. Same thing. And streaming there is a huge driver. Uh, when, when you look at Apple Music, when we used to sell $45 of music a year on Apple Music to a user, that, what that meant for us, for Believe, for TuneCore, for our artists, was that Apple would send us 45 lines of data per year. Hey, you've sold one track from one, or, from one artist. That artist is based um, in Helsinki. Here's the name of a track. That's it. In the street, but then we were absolutely blind about what happened afterwards. Today, we get um, every single time on a streaming service that track is being listened to by a user, we get that information. Did the user that actually listens to that track, is that user listening to the track twice a day, five times a day, eight times a day, uh, more yesterday than, uh, than today? super valuable marketing information. For us, the ability to go to promoters, uh, radios, partners that can help us develop musicians, if we're able to tell them, hey, listen, we've got this track on Monday it was of last week. It was being to listened to on average twice a day by a user. Now it's being listened to four times, five times a day. It means that as a radio station, we sh you should play it more. Uh, you should promote the music more. Um, so the value of the data, and what we're seeing is where we used to receive 45 lines of data, we're now receiving about 10,000 lines of data. Um, so there's a massive explosion of data, and there's a massive uh, intelligence being built around it. Tied to this is very much um, um, the, how we market the music. Give you an example. We, we manage. Uh, we've been managing for a, a couple of years uh, the YouTube um, social presence for Queen. Queen, one of the largest heritage acts worldwide, it's roughly 150 million streams a month on the music videos. When we put the last uh, uh, tour, um, um, touring in Europe on sales, we did not do any marketing. We created music videos that were posted on that channel communicated to all of the user base. We sold uh, over 80% of the tickets just through direct marketing by the band. So playlist, social media, Facebook, Twitter, key uh, elements tomorrow of um, uh, leveraging uh, the audiences of a fan, uh, both for ticketing, for live, um, for uh, developing, for, for selling music. But third thing we see is, in the streaming world, global players with um, the Spotify's of the world, um, the market becomes much more international. There's not one single country in the world where one of our artists generates more than 50% of its revenues locally. Um, by comparison, when you used to sell CD, Typical CDs export sales for an artist used to be 5 to 10%, except for some of the bigger acts. Digital music, the fact that the music is available all around the world, uh, it, does create base, it does create a market. We see it especially Indian music, huge communities, Indian community around the world. 75% of the music uh, produced in India is listened to outside of India. We see the same thing for Turkish music, English music, French world music, electronic music, all across. So the market is much more international, and, the fa and services like Spotify, Deezer, are becoming much more media-friendly, uh, meaning uh, willing to develop and push artists. So our tech is our, we're going to see much more music being developed internationally, and music traveling much, much faster, which for us, 
uh, where the core of our business is really help artists make the most of their music is, is a critical element. And the last thing um, uh, that we see is we, we are, because of all of these elements, we're switching, uh, the next 10 years will be about the switch from copyright-based music, where record label produces music, owns the music, to a service-based model, where uh, that's adapted to every type of artist. That's why, um, uh, for us, uh, TuneCore is a key component. TuneCore is a great service for all of our indie artists. They can make their music available online. They get 100% of their revenues. Um, and most of them generate a uh, limited amount of revenues. And then we have a global presence with 300 staff around the world to service the queen of the world and the developed artists of the world uh, in a relationship that's a service relationship more transparency empowered by te technology, by the data that we're receiving. So to, to conclude, it's, um, um, we are at the beginning. We've seen 15 years of transformation of the distribution. You're going to see 10 years that will be years of growth compared to 15 years of decreasing market, 10 years of very interesting growth in a market where the collaborative relationship, uh, the transparency uh, will be much more uh, interesting for the artist. Thank you very much.